Hello everyone, my name is Pepsilk and welcome to Thoughts On. This is a series where I analyze games and give my opinions on them. Today, we'll be looking at the latest Cyberpunk 2077 DLC, Phantom Liberty, and let me just say, what a blast it was to play through. I've been waiting for this since it first got announced back in September of 2022, seeing as this was set to be the make or break of this game. However, this was guaranteed when CD Projekt Red announced that there will be a massive overhaul update coming alongside it, with features such as a skill rework, new iconic gear, vehicle combat, revamped cyberware, and many more. The update launched a few days before Phantom Liberty and the hype I had for it just skyrocketed up to 11. I just got done playing through it, sinking 20 hours in just a few days, grabbing the achievements and going through the DLC's many endings, all to bring closure to a game that I've loved since the day it came out. CD Projekt kept it cooking with numerous updates prior to 2.0 and suffice to say, it paid off for them. Player numbers skyrocketed and praise was being given by everyone including myself and I just want to say, hats off to the devs for continuing to push and update this game for us. Cyberpunk in many ways is a no man's sky where it came from nothing to something and that's something that's hard to achieve. Anyway, a bit off topic but wanted to throw that in there as they deserve it all. That being said, how is the DLC? Does it fare with base Cyberpunk? How much content is there to be had? Are there any new changes? All this and more, I'll be covering all the major elements this DLC has, alongside a few things that I loved in particular. This will be a spoiler free review, so all footage will be shown from the DLC side activities and content, nothing main story related as I know there'll be people who don't want that to be spoiled for them. If you don't want to see any of the geeks and side quests shown within Phantom Liberty, I suggest you click out so you can discover those for yourself. I will have another video talking about Phantom Liberty's story for those who have completed it as I think it'd be a good way to discuss how people felt over its many endings. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe and notifications turned on for more gaming content. Let's get into it, shall we? The first big addition in Phantom Liberty is the new district, Dogtown. Founded by Kurt Hansen, an ex Militech soldier left for dead alongside his squad during the Unification War, Hansen saw an opportunity to seize his own land and write things by his own hands. He managed to become an arms dealer and a force to be reckoned with alongside creating his own gang, Barguest, all within a few days. This district expands upon Pacifica and let me just say, this whole area feels a lot more alive thanks to it being here, with plenty of new citizens that I've never seen before, scavengers roaming the streets for supplies and anything they can get their hands on, and civilians who've been forced to live there as a result of the war. I really love the rusty, abandoned aesthetic of the place, as the place was destined to be Night City's biggest jewel, but ultimately became a combat zone. The illustrious buildings showcase how much potential this had, such as the Black Sapphire and the Heavy Hearts Club, two places that stand out just from looking at them, one being a pyramid and one being a massive building like a skyscraper. Dogtown also has its share of quests, gigs and activities that you'll be doing and unlocking as you progress through the main quests. One of my favourite things about Dogtown is when you enter a security gate while you're driving, getting scanned to make sure you're not carrying anything that could cause great harm. It goes to show just how secure Dogtown can be, and you never know what someone might bring to a place that already condones violence. The Pacifica is more so that than Dogtown thanks to the bar guests, who have their own security firm and police system, not related to NCPD in any way. Although, they have links to MaxTac, units that they'll bring out if you hit that 5th star in the district. All in all, a great new area, great atmosphere, great setting, and a great way to expand upon an area that didn't get as much attention as the others. Well, with the exception of the Voodoo Boys quest of course. With new DLC comes new things to do, and boy does Phantom Liberty pack you with new things. At the start of the DLC, you'll be given access to the new Relic skill tree, a tree that allows you to make use of Militech stations in order to feed data to V and give him new chrome that he never thought he'd get, courtesy of one of the main characters, Songbird. The tree expands upon your combat implants, adding a new layer of depth to each of them while also adding new things as well. The main skills I ran were Jailbreak and Vulnerability. Jailbreak is your starting skill and assigns the new upgrades to your combat implants. My go-to combat implant was a projectile launch system and it turned into a mini rocket launcher, allowing you to overcharge and shoot 5 rockets at once. I also purchased an additional skill that simply adds one extra charge for it, making me an explosive machine that can blow enemies up in seconds. Couple with the pyromania skill and doom charge and you're in for a field trip. Simply marvelous. The other main skill I used was Vulnerability, which marks enemy weak spots that, when shot at, causes an overload explosion and boosts your critical chance, armor penetration, and weak spot damage, 
making for falling targets and plenty of dismemberment opportunities, depending on your weapon of choice. The additional skill, Machine Learning, adds a 10% chance of new vulnerabilities appearing and a 5% increase to crit damage against these, stacking up to 5 times and doubling their bonuses at max stats, making crit builds OP as hell. If you've ever wanted to make a crit build in Cyberpunk 2077 in the best way possible, now's the time to do it. Ultimately, the perks add new ways to play and make combat a lot more enjoyable, especially with the new scaling system in place that makes enemies scale to your level no matter what, making for fun and balanced moments. Simple, but effective, I say. For the first time in Cyberpunk 2077, we now have random events. The two choices available are vehicle contracts, where you grab a vehicle that's marked on the map with a steering wheel sign and take it to the designated location. You first get introduced to this activity when El Capital calls you, offering a job to grab one of those joints and bring it to him, which results in people chasing you and making use of the new vehicular combat that's in place. Once you hand in your first vehicle, they'll randomly pop out in the wild, both in Dogtown and Night City. Locations you go to are randomized and so are the rewards. The rewards are the big shebang of this activity, awarding you with gear and an auto fixer discount that can be stacked and allow you to buy a car for up to 90% off in the auto fixer shop. This is insane for those that want to buy those very expensive cars but don't have the eddies for it. The item tiers are distributed based off of your player level, but with the way components are gained now, it's good to do a few of these every now and then and scrap the gear, which can then be used to either cr upgrade or craft higher tier components. There's also a variance in that you get additional side objectives, such as bringing the car in good condition and getting it to the location within a period of time, on top of Goon shooting at you. These are the only three I've seen so far, but I'd like to know if there's any others in the comments. The other random event is airdrops, which are exclusive to Dogtown. As you drive around and explore, big drones will come in and drop a package, showing a red flare to signal its location. At this point, the package is up for grabs and once you've killed everyone around it, it can be jacked, which, when opened, will give all kinds of goodies, similar to vehicle contracts. I've managed to get an iconic weapon from it, which is this fire shotgun I'm currently using, but nothing else aside from the usual components, attachments, and weapons. I found a few varying factors though, such as bar guests and scavengers surrounding it and having no one there at all. I'm not exactly sure how this is determined, as I have a hunch that if the drop is incredibly close and you get there in time, no one will show up, but I haven't been able to confirm this. These random events add so much needed extra content to the game and provide a means of getting rich, whether it's through eddies or through maximizing your gear. Phantom Liberty adds plenty of new gear, ranging from weapons to iconic cyberware, cars, and clothing. For me, it's the weapons that get me hyped up because I'm always looking for new gear to use in order to switch it up and keep the game more interesting. Some of my favorite additions include the Hawk Assault Rifle, which is a DMR rifle that weakens and marks enemies whenever you shoot them in the head, resulting them in moving slower, not being able to use abilities and are prone to lose their balance, stumbling and being stunned for a period of time. The Alibi, which is the fire shotgun I showed before, grants a unique burn on the enemy that when applied, every pallet from the shotgun will deal critical damage, making this a great weapon for crit builds. There are similar weapons to this one that have the trait, as this one is part of a special set of weapons that got banned due to humanitarian concerns as it implies in the weapon's description. One last weapon which I find to be incredibly OP is the Raiju Submachine Gun, which has no hip fire spread when shot, fires in a 5 shot burst when pressed and full auto when you hold down the trigger. It also doesn't need to be charged in order to shoot through walls, alongside having a greater crit chance on headshots. Phantom Liberty also has some sweet cyberware that you can get your hands on, most of which are iconic variants of the cyberware that's already in the game. The Apogee Sand Endeavor Stand slows time further than the base Sand Endeavor Stand and has increased headshot damage on top of an extended duration when killing an enemy and regenerating your stamina instead of your health. The Kaiden is what I consider to be a best in slot for solo builds that want to tank and eat all sorts of damage, providing additional health regeneration and an incredibly high armor value. These are just a few of the new toys that you can get your hands on, and it's awesome how many new things have been added to help with character builds, and there's a lot more I'm yet to discover no doubt. New gigs have been added to the game, courtesy of the elusive Mr. Hands, and boy, are they really good. In the base game of Cyberpunk, most of the gigs work like this. You go to said location, complete objective at said location, leave said location, and either drop the item if an item is to be required, or have the gig instantly complete with a phone call saying, congrats V. In Phantom Liberty, however, the gigs in this feel like subtle side quests, as the player can change the outcome of the gig, even if it's as simple as gathering information. Two prime examples I have in mind are a missing persons gig and a data steal. 
The missing persons kick has been recruited by two Brazilian agents who want their friend Mark Banner found, who supposedly went missing after a mission went wrong. His biomonitor went up somewhere in Dogtown and they want you to gather information and confirmation on whether Banner is alive or not. Now, the gig sounds simple on paper, right? However, this gig gets deeper as you learn that the person who disguised herself as Banner is the same person who not only killed him, but interrogated him for information. The agents give you information to shoot the woman on sight, but you're also given a choice to either grab the information and bounce or listen to what she has to say and keep her alive. I chose to get the information and bounce, ultimately killing her anyway because I was simply following the agent's instructions. And the game let me do it, so why not? Another example is the data steal gig, where I've been tasked to get a doctor's data on experiments that she's been doing with little kids, giving them chrome at such an early age and trying to make them international sports stars. I tried to stealth this one, but I failed, so I shot my way in, saw a little kid trying to find information on whether or not he'll be able to perform at a high level, and showed me the terminal to get my data from. This however, soiled as I was detected by the doctor and was inclined to hear what she had to offer. The choice here was to either kill her and stop her from giving chrome to kids alongside getting the data, or give me anonymous data that would still be able to suffice Mr. Hands and allow her to continue doing what she's doing. Killing her here is more of a side option, but from the way everything pans out, it seemed like a major option to me. I chose to get the anonymous data under the condition that the little kid I saw earlier has a chance to play soccer somewhere in the world, even if it's not the big leagues. There's 10 gigs total and each of them is something like this, where the objective is simple, but there's always a different outcome that can be made based on what you say, and I love this. I wish more, if not all the geeks were like this, as it adds more tension to these sorts of missions and makes you feel like you're making choices, which is one of the main reasons that people play Cyberpunk. On a side note, the side quests are pretty good too, but I won't go into too much detail on those because they're pretty much on the same level as the geeks, but these were great to do and I can imagine trying different things on another playthrough to see how they rock. Mr. Hands even credits you for your decisions and if you do well, he throws in a nice bonus for you, so that's cool. A cool new addition that I thought was already added into update 2.0 is rockets and vehicles. I found this out when I bought the Militech Behemoth vehicle from Autofixer, which I got at a massive discount since it usually costs 160,000 eddies. And while cool, I'm yet to use it outside of recording and showing footage off to send to my friends. I hope that I can use this sometime in the future, but still, nevertheless, cool. I found Dogtown to be very intensive on my gaming rig, and while I may not be up to snuff due to my aging Ryzen 5 3600 CPU, my 3080 helped to balance it a bit. I was averaging around 35 to 50 frames in most places across Dogtown, and I think part of this is probably due to me recording at the same time, so it may go high with it off. I didn't do any testing on this, but the game ran fine for me all around and didn't have a single crash the entire time I played. Another result of lower frames for those that notice is probably due to the graphics changes since CD Projekt Red upped the system requirements for the game. All of my footage was with DLSS performance mode on and performance based settings which I got from Hardware Unboxed, who I highly suggest checking out for an optimization guide that works with update 2.0. This is doubtful but I'm hoping that CD Projekt does an optimization check for Dogtown because everywhere else in Cyberpunk runs fine and isn't as intensive. I'm curious to know what's causing the frames to drop significantly. I had a few hitches where dialogue wouldn't play through and characters sometimes would not pop up, but loading up a save quickly fixed this. I have no doubt that this will be fixed in a future patch, so my advice for now would be to continue making a bunch of saves in the event that you run into these sorts of issues, like the relic glitch that's currently going around where the relic malfunction stays on the screen till the end of time. This is more of an update 2.0 thing, but since I don't plan to make an update 2.0 video, I'll just say it here. Why is it that we can respec our perk points free of charge but can't respec our attributes? I get that CD Projekt wants us to think hard on our attribute choices, but we should still be given this option, regardless of whether or not it's free. If we have to pay Eddie's at a Ripper dock for it, so be it. Please CD, add a respec attribute button. I shouldn't have to download a mod just for this. Phantom Liberty is everything I had hoped for in a Cyberpunk DLC, and it's sad that it's the only one we're ever going to get for 2077. But the game is now finished, a sequel will be in development soon, and CD Projekt Red has big plans for the future working on other Witcher titles like the Witcher remake, all to be released within the next 10 years. If you haven't played Cyberpunk since release, now is the best time to jump into the title. And if you've been wanting more Cyberpunk, getting this DLC is a must. Cyberpunk 2077 will go along as being one of the best open world RPGs out there, alongside the Witcher 3. And I'm just so happy that it exceeded my expectations as it's very rare to have a DLC be this developed and have this much content, all modern gaming things considered. I cannot wait to see what's in store for the next Cyberpunk game. New story, quests, 
gear, random events, and more to explore. What's not to love? If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. As I said before, I want to make another video talking about the DLC story as there's a lot to unpack and would like to give story analysis a shot as I've never made a story video on my channel, so it'll be something new. As always, I'll have more coming to you soon. Peace.